All right, we'll get started here in just a moment. We're going to let Coach uh, do his uh, opening statement, then we'll open up for questions uh, starting down the line. So go ahead, Coach. Well, first of all, Merry Christmas to uh, every, everyone and hope they enjoyed their holiday. It was a different one for us, but uh, uh, practicing and uh, uh, Santa did come to visit Ubbin. So that was a that was a positive thing, and then um, I'm really proud of our guys. Um, this has been a a very uh, trying week, a very difficult week. Uh, three games since Sunday, uh, with uh, Christmas holiday sprinkled in, and and uh, uh, two of those trips were uh, back out east, and then we come home and face a top ten defense. And uh, uh, Indiana was as good as advertised on that end. And, uh, you know, give Archie and, and his staff a lot of credit. Um, they were, uh, uh, we were disruptive or disrupted the first half. But um, uh, as I told our guys, it's nice to be able to win games in a lot of different fashions. Uh, obviously, the Penn State game was very fast paced and up tempo and, and uh, we had to come from behind. Uh, this one was a much lower possession game. Uh, again, against one of the top defenses in the country. So uh, glad we had the best player on the court in Iota Sumo at the end of the game. Uh, he was he was phenomenal. Uh, kudos and hats off to, excuse me, uh, Georgie Bishanishvili, uh, playing, uh, going back and playing big, uh, really opened things up. It kind of started to open the floodgates, so to speak. He made a great high-low pass. He had a three. Uh, and then defensively, he gave us the energy that we needed. Uh, and then I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about Kofi. Uh, the light switch kind of flipped, and, and Kofi had two huge blocks and then was really dominant on the glass. But uh, Indiana did a great job of keeping us out of transition. Uh, we missed six layups in the first half. Uh, some clean looks at threes, and, and you have those nights. Uh, but again, as I told our guys, uh, you got to win a lot of ways in this league, and I'm, I'm proud of our guys today. Okay, we'll start uh, with Harry, and then we'll go Joey and Tyler. So go ahead, Harry. Hey, Coach. Uh, you mentioned winning games in different ways today. Obviously, a much more physical game than the game at Penn State. Was that part of the plan, or did that kind of just uh, happen as the game developed? And then also, what can you say about this team's versatility and their their ability to win at Penn State in a fast-paced game in Indiana today and how that will help them in the Big Ten season? That's what I'm proud of. I, you know, I think we're uh, we're wired for that a little bit. Um, you know, I I would be uh, neglectful if I didn't mention. You know, I think one of the big keys today was we played defense without fouling. I think there was nine total fouls, and um, you know, Indiana makes you play that way. And you know, I, I loved our looks early. I loved our 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 where we got the ball and 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 it, we they made a couple plays. Trace made a couple blocks early. Uh, but, uh, you know, we got some good looks and the ball didn't go down and, and you have those nights, but, uh, again, when you can play fast, uh, we're going to continue to try to play as fast as we can play. Uh, we're very good at it when we do that. And, uh, yet, uh, you know, when it calls for it, you've got to find a way to win when that ball doesn't go in. And that's, that's what we've been talking a lot about. And it's, it's less mistakes and, uh, it's great defense. And, um, uh, you know, I thought we did that tonight, holding them to 39%. Thanks, Coach. All right, Joey, you're up. Tyler on deck. Hey, Brad, you called a timeout there after Georgie hit a three to get you guys back within two, and you really implored your team to rebound the ball and to close this out. And I guess what, what does it say about your team that they knew how to do that after a, a long week and how to kind of dig deep and close it out? Well, yeah, and I, I think that it, – we talk about, you know, offense will win you games and, and defense will win you championships. And, and uh, you got to close things out with your, with your defense and your rebounding. And, and that was a big shot. It was a big momentum play. Uh, I wanted to make sure that our guys knew uh, uh, from a f philosophy standpoint where exactly where we, were at, where we were at and how we were going to win that game. And, uh, uh, again, we, we did that. Um, I give uh, – Franklin, a lot of credit for them. He made uh, made our life miserable. Uh, hit some hard shots, but uh, again, they're uh, they're well coached. They're a good basketball team, and 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 I'm glad we had uh, Io and Kofi, and and then you know Georgie, a veteran. Demonte steps up and make free throws and made a huge block. And 
Uh, you know, when you have guys that step up and make plays, that helps. What's it say about Georgie and his ability to understand his role? He's kind of worn a couple different hats his first three years, and he, he looks really settled into where he's at. Been unbelievable. He's, he's an energy guy uh, like no other. Uh, he provides uh, emotion. He provides uh, a, a skill set. Most importantly, he provides a really intense and high-level basketball IQ. Uh, that allows him to go play at different spots. And, uh, you know, early in the year with Jermaine out, uh, we spent almost exclusively him guarding Kofi playing at the five. So we didn't play a lot with them together early. Uh, We've been working on that uh, a lot more. And, uh, you know, today, you know, we had to dial that up. We had to play with those, with those two bigs. And uh, uh, again, that's a compliment to Georgie and, and all the work he's put in. Okay, we'll go to Tyler and then Gabby. Go ahead, Tyler. Thanks, Gabe. Um, Coach, you mentioned frequently how important it is for you guys to get out on transition, score against seven seconds, and you were really effective in scoring that way in the first three league games, even at Rutgers. Today, you obviously struggled a little bit, um, even even though you were really good in the defensive glass. Is that more a product of how IU was defending, or do you feel like you left some opportunities out there today? Well, I think one, it's both. Um, You look at their offensive rebounds, they had three. Uh, they were they were sending the house back and uh, and trying to take that away. So uh, a lot of that is attributable to the way they played. Uh, I'm disappointed we didn't have more offensive rebounds as poorly as we shot it. But uh, um, again, the, we missed some easy opportunities that that uh, we normally don't miss. Uh, I think we had we we were saying at halftime we missed six layups and. Um, you know, that effect that affects and impacts you. And then we knew it would become a fewer possession game than what we've been playing. We knew that coming in. Okay, Gabby, you're up. And Brandon on deck. Go ahead, Gabby. Hey, Coach. Obviously, Kofi and Georgie's defense was huge. But DeMonte's defense on Race Thompson minimized that inside production. How important is it to have a guy like DeMonte when there's a bit of a size disadvantage at the four for you guys? You all know how much I love DeMonte Williams and his versatility. And and what people don't realize is DeMonte's lower half, his body, his legs, he is so incredibly strong. And, uh, you know, he could leg press the building or, or squat it. I mean, he is very, very, very strong. So he doesn't get rooted out of his of his positioning. And, um, you know, when, when DeMonte uh, does give up position – you know, you throw in a seven-foot wingspan that he has, um, and and he becomes a tough, uh, it becomes a tough two. It becomes a tough shot. So, uh, you know, the IQ, strength, feel, experience, all those things allowed Demonte to do a lot of different things. And then late in the game, uh, we had him guarding perimeter players. So, uh, his versatility is vital to uh, our success. And then Adam Miller obviously hasn't been getting much to fall lately. For a guy who's used to controlling a game and being the lead guy, what do you think is missing for him right now? Nothing. Growth. It's just, I, I mean, it's Adam's playing great and Adam's playing fine. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a continual growth process. He's been a, a electric. Uh, he's going to be electric. He is, he is, uh, today was just a day, didn't have anything to do with, we got comfortable in a, uh, w- you know, with a group of guys on that court. But uh, he's going to have games where he's going to score 20-plus before this league's out. Um, he's growing every day defensively. And, you know, the biggest challenge for young guys is to uh, continue to want to work. And, and Adam has so much pride. Uh, he's going to do that. And uh, he's not going anywhere. He's, he's, uh, he's a guy that's going to be in that lineup. And, and I have tremendous faith and confidence in him. And, and uh, every time I shoot it, I think it's going in. And uh, like, like, like we all know, he can, he can really shoot it. So he'll have some big nights for us. Okay, we'll go uh, Brandon, then Matt Stevens on deck. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, Brad. I, Io had 12 points in the first 30 minutes, I think, and then 18 in the last 10. Is there something you said to him to kind of get him going? Yeah, be the best player on the court. Do what you do. And, uh, you know, it's one of the challenges that that very similar to Penn State. I mean, closers close and, and really good players. It doesn't matter uh, what goes on the first 28, 30 minutes of the game. Uh, when the game's on the line, 
guys make plays, make shots. And, 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 you know, I've said it many times, I was the best guard in the country and he proved that again today. And, uh, um, you know, you, you can double him, you can do whatever. He's going to make the right pass. He's going to make the right play and, uh, you know, then give him a crease and, uh, you know, he's going to make a layup or he's going to make free throws when he gets fouled. Okay, we'll go on to uh, Matt Stevens and Jeremy Werner on deck. Go ahead, Matt. Brad, to ducktail off that question, I'm curious if you always thought Io had that in him long before he like signed with you, you know, three plus years ago, or or is that developed as it comes along as a college player? Both to say I knew that. I mean, I I knew Io was a hard rocking dude, I, and and I mean, I know how much his competitive spirit is. Uh, you know, sometimes guys guys wither and and they they don't want those moments um because it it's ultimately all about dealing with adversity and um you know let, let's not forget io was once in a place as a freshman that was 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 not really pretty i mean i still remember the game in chicago where he missed nine layups um so but instead of that bothering him that dude never flinched and, and I mean, he was, his mindset is so tough and it, and, and it was like, okay, I had a bad game. How do I get better? And I didn't do this. How do I get better? And it's, it's, it's continual. And, and now when you put guys in that role uh, and they do have success, now they think they're invincible. Okay. We'll go to uh, Jeremy mm -hmm. Werner. Go ahead, Jeremy. Hey Brad, just to follow up to Joey's question about Georgie, uh, he's always had energy, uh, but you know, last year it seemed to work against him at times. What do you think is the key to him channeling that positively this year? Just said it. It's channeled in the right direction. It's channeled in the in a in a positive action and and format that is conducive to to him being the best basketball player and us being the best basketball team. And and um, you know, when Georgie's in that in that in that frame of mind and in that minds i mean he 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 thinks he's the best player on the court and he's uh and he might be in a lot of cases and uh you know i'm not afraid to go to him and so many i, I have so much respect for georgie on a lot of facets because one no, very few players in america have gone through what that young man's gone through with covid and and not being home um and secondly what he's done to continually work on his game and his body uh, is phenomenal. So I have a tremendous amount of respect and trust in him. And you mentioned his defense and on Trace Jackson Davis today, along with Kofi. How has he taken a step defensively? Have you seen? He's, he's he understand. He's always been a great defender when guys didn't have the ball. His positioning's been impeccable. He came in with that. Uh, you know, he's very seldom. You know, if you watch Georgie, very seldom ever gets screened. Uh, it's always because he's in the right position. Um, you know, his problem has been, you know, as a freshman was, was guarding the ball and, uh, you know, he was just light. He didn't, he wasn't strong enough yet. And, uh, you know, as most freshmen do, they struggle with strength. Well, now he's pretty strong and, uh, you know, he's a, he's a great, great guy at moving his wall. He's not a guy that plays vertically exceptionally well, but he's a guy that just moves and uses his lower half and his strength. And, uh, again, no one, no one lives in the weight room more than Georgie. Thanks. Okay, we'll go uh, Scott Ritchie, then Brett Barons, and then Tyler Cottingham. Go ahead, Scott. Brett, I mean, it just seems to me that Andre has just a different rhythm to the way he moves, maybe to the way he plays the game. How advantageous has that been maybe off the bench and including it to the game today where maybe he gave you that spark early? There was no doubt he did early today. He impacted the game at Penn State as well. Uh, you know, I think that it's, it's, a. Um, I stood on the baseline yesterday and, and he made a move and we're like, everybody's, it was kind of a hard hedge. We knew they were going to hard hedge and, and, and he kind of wrapped it around his back between his legs at the same time, threw it through a hard hedge and then threw a behind the back pass to Kofi for a layup. And I'm standing there next to Trent Frazier. And Trent goes, coach, you just can't coach that. And you, you, you're right. You don't. And, uh, uh, but he, he's got a vision. He's got an understanding. Uh, if you ever watch him do a ball handling routine, it's, 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 it's one of the coolest things ever. Cause he does it with the tennis ball and a real ball. And, 
Um, it's, it's, but, he, but he's just got a, he's got a unique gift that way. And um, he does impact the game. And now his defense is getting better. I'm really proud of him today because I, one of the things that have been very challenging for young guys is, is communication on the defensive side. And now he's starting to echo calls and understand uh, what – and it's the reason I left him out there a long time today in the second half was he was making defensive calls of their plays coming and, and barking at what was – guys at what was coming. And, and that's when you're really dialed into the scouting report. And that's a, a lot of maturity on his part to do that. Brad, do you just sit back and watch Iowa a little bit and admire him at some point? He's taking over a game like that, understanding you're still coaching, obviously. But do you ever just take a moment and – I really do it when it's uh, in film. <laughs> But I, no, I, you know, it's, and I, and I told him in it coming out of timeout, I said, it's time to be you. It's time to be the best player on the court and uh, close this thing out. And, uh, and that usually means him making the right play or the right basket. And, and uh, um, you know, he's done that so many times and it, it's, it's unique when you've coached a Michael Beasley or you've coached a Bill Walker or you've coached a Juwan Evans or a Thomas Walkup. It's what those guys do. And uh, to say you ever get tired of seeing it, it I, you don't. Uh, but, but again, that was uh, turned a real average first 24 minutes, 26 minutes, 28 minutes, in my opinion, uh, into what was a terrific game. Because he does. Brad, this is going to be the last time we're going to talk to you in 2020. Uh, if you can, how do you even sum up what this year has been like and what you've seen from your club so far this year going into the turn of the calendar? Well, I can't tell you how much, how proud I am. And um, uh, this has been, a, obviously, I'm stating the obvious, uh, like none other. But for a group of guys to be as committed, for, for Georgie Bashanishvili to never get to go home. And uh, Benjamin was in the same boat. Benjamin had a family in Bloomington uh, of a football player that was a friend that, that kind of took him in. Georgie Bashanishvili stood on this campus by himself the entire time of COVID. And you think about that as a, as a 20 year old or 21 year old, what that would be like. Uh, you think about what college age students do. Um, and, and, and they, they don't, they don't know anybody. They don't know anybody on our campus. These guys don't know anybody uh, because they don't go to class. They don't meet people. They don't, they don't get to interact with professors. They don't uh, get to interact with adults. They don't get to interact with, you know, uh, their counterparts. And to sacrifice and commit to that uh, for a sport that they love. And literally, they, go, they come to Ubbin, uh, they train, they work out, uh, we feed them, and they go back to their apartments. And uh, to say that I'm not proud, man, that, that would be um, – uh, I'm so proud. I, I, I mean, I'm excited for 21 and hopefully the vaccine and we get to move back and – uh, I'm, I'm proud of our team for our growth and development. We knew we were going to play a very, very hard schedule. Uh, I love our freshmen uh, and how they're developing and the experience they've had. So uh, 2020 has been um, a, a, a unique experience, but a, one of the most gratifying in a lot of ways uh, for me personally and for uh, me as a coach. Okay, we'll go uh, Tyler and then Matt Stevens to uh, wrap it up. Go ahead, Tyler. <laughs> Thanks, KB. Hey, Coach, um, there was a couple of possessions in the second half on defense where Kofi um, back to back where he made the block shot and was able to get the off the rebound off of those block shots. I'm just curious, is that a coachable skill or is that something just kind of a fortunate bounce thing? Yeah, that's a motor, motor, motor thing. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things we keep challenging Kofi with constantly is, 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 is that energy. And it, you know, I, I hope that's a big sign of, of growth for Kof, uh, because he was flat today. He was flat. He didn't have his usual pep and his bounce. And I, you know, it's, it's, he's a heavy legged guy and, you know, there's no doubt about that three games in, in, in a week and, and bouncing around and all over the country and the travel. Um, but man, he flipped a switch. That was tremendous maturity and growth on his part. And, and he makes two great blocks that change the game, gets the rebounds, ends up with 15, um, I was a dominant performance on the defensive end uh, in the last 12 minutes by him. 
Okay, and we'll finish up with Matt Stevens. Go ahead, Matt. Brad, I've heard you say that the box score is the most overrated thing in basketball, but I'm looking at one for Trent Frazier where he has 31 and a half minutes. He doesn't make a shot, and yet he was able to, you know, affect the game with, with two steals and six rebounds and was a plus seven. I was hoping you might be able to reinforce what Trent was able to do for you today to help you win. I uh, probably need to ask Arch and their guards that, um, you know, I think the job that, um, uh, that he does defensively goes, never gets talked about. Um, ask Marcus Carr at Minnesota, um, who's had back-to-back 30 point nights and, uh, Trent is a ball hawk. He's the energizer bunny. Tonight's a first night. I knew we were a little tired. Uh, Trent's, this is the first night Trent has asked all year to come out of a game, uh, in the first half. He said, I'm dead. I need, I need a blow. And, uh, he's usually the guy that never gets tired. Uh, but, uh, again, um, I don't like the fact that he didn't make, make, make shots, but I, I do like the fact that, uh, uh, I'm never going to take him out when the game's on the line because we need his defense and, and his mentality is geared toward that. And, uh, most nights he's going to go four or five from three instead of, uh, having the night he had. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Happy uh, new year. And we'll talk to you next time. Thanks everyone.